So there are multiple reasons why we would want to compost. One, putting your food scraps, that can be your potato peels, your coffee grounds, your eggshells, things like that into a compost pile is going to divert that waste stream out of a landfill and then turn it into something valuable. The other thing about compost is it is a wonderful, very valuable organic matter additive for the soils when we grow our fruits or our vegetables or our herbs. So the first thing I would say they need to do is go to leadership and make sure that they get complete buy-in for leadership. And then once that happens, you have the team, usually the garden team, of educators that are invested in the success of the garden. Then you got to find a location, which generally is a location close to the garden, but out of the way of, of uh, most of the foot traffic, but close enough that you're going to be able to put stuff in it and, and use it. Again, that's when you're turning to leadership to figure out what kind of rules or regulations that will be applicable for the school. And then depending on where you are in terms of city or municipality, there might be some municipal rules and regulations that you would need to make sure that you stay up on with that as well. A school cafeteria uh, will generate a tremendous volume of food waste. You can use compost in a school setting and use that to divert part of the food waste out of the landfill stream, but then it's a great thing to use when you engage your students. You pull some nearly completed compost out and you spread that out for students to look at and there's going to be bugs crawling through it and they're going to be looking at things and, and trying to figure out what they used to be when they originally went in there. And then when you add it into your soil where you're growing vegetables for the students to enjoy, the results are going to be amazing because compost is a powerful organic matter soil additive. So when we talk about good brown things. We're going to talk about things like leaves. Shredded paper, as long as it doesn't have sort of that waxy coating, is acceptable. And if you put pieces of stems or wood in there, realize that the larger the particle is, the slower it's going to break down. You could put lawn clippings in there if you bag up your, your lawn grass, as long as it hasn't been treated with anything. If you pull weeds out of your garden, as long as you don't put the seed heads in the compost or if you had weeds or old vegetable um, residue, as long as that wasn't diseased, you don't want to put seeds in there and you don't want to put diseased stuff in there for the same reason because then you'll take your compost and you put it on every square inch of your garden. So you're basically planting weed seeds or spreading disease if you were to put those in there. Acceptable nitrogens or acceptable greens are almost every kitchen scrap that you can think of. Potato peels, um, coffee grounds, eggshells, and then things that you want to avoid putting in there would be anything like oils or fats, meat, bones, um, and then any, you know, pet litter. And then realize that you're putting a bunch of food scraps outside, and that is going to be attractive to any number of different critters that would come in there. So ideally, a compost pile would be secured so that it is not going to be easily accessible by a bunch of critters getting in there. I think it's a pretty interesting experiential learning opportunity for students. Get them outside, get them to talk about more than just gardening in the garden. It can talk a little bit about nutrients and fertility and organic matter, as well as you can start getting them to think about sustainability and addressing the uh, food waste problems that we have, especially in large urban environments. Personally, I think that the earlier we can engage youth in, in really all aspects of agriculture is important. We don't grow kids up on farms like we used to. We need to find our next generation of agriculture workers in urban environments. And so I think starting in early childhood care and talking about how plants grow and talking about compost and looking at bugs and talking about pollinators and, and all of the things that we can talk about with students the earlier we get them engaged, maybe one of those kids someday will grow up and, and they'll be um, out there doing really cool stuff with precision ag and drones or controlled environment agriculture and hydroponics or all of the sort of new, unique and, and innovative things that are going on in agriculture now.